we got Baby Joe over here. It's time for another unboxing Star Wars video. All right, we're here. Okay, it is December 12th. We are only a few days away from the opening of Star Wars The Force Awakens. That opens this Thursday, Friday. Uh, some friends of mine are lucky enough to be even going to the premiere in Hollywood on, on the 14th. What do you have to say, Baby Jawa? Oh, you're eating some Star Wars cereal mixed with some Cheerios? Oh boy, yum, 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 yum. Oops, sorry. All right, so let's uh, see what's going on this week. We had a great episode of Rebels called Legacy. Uh, we got some other surprises here to talk about. Um, what, what else do we have? Ooh, 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 before we open, let's get this going. All right. Here we have our beautiful own Darth Vader head. Um, yeah, so I, this looks like it survived the funeral of Pyre. I will finish what you started, Master. All right. Uh, and what, what exactly did the Vader start? Finish the pod race, of course. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, now that we got that out of the way, what do we have in the bag? Okay, let's look in the bag. All right. First thing we have up is we got a BB-8 sipper. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, Cheerios. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? We have... Some Star Wars Pop Chips. These are the chips you're looking for. They are crazy hot. And finally, in our big Star Wars bag, we got a set of books. We have Star Wars Epic Yarns, the original trilogy by um, Jack and Holman Wang. We'll, we'll dive into those in a little bit. All right, let's get the uh, Star Wars bag out of the way. Okay, let's talk about BB-8. Right, last week... Um, we went to Disneyland uh, Resort in, in Anaheim, uh, just up the road from us, and we got to check out Season of the Force there. Season of the Force is a uh, kind of temporary event that's going on there. It, they started it in the end of November, early December, and it's going to be going on kind of indefinitely for a while, but get there and check it out. It is basically putting a whole Star Wars gloss over Tomorrowland. There's a bunch of different things. Yeah! There's Hyperspace Mountain, which is Space Mountain, but with Star Wars. And with Star Wars is just an easy way to describe it. It is pretty much retooled. It's the same physical ride, but uh, you're now going on a mission for Admiral Akbar. He appears in the briefings. He takes you, or he sends you to Jakku, uh, where you are in an X-Wing squadron. And as you're whipping around, you see TIE fighters, you see X-Wings flying back and forth, shooting at each other, blowing up. You see a Star Destroyer. Your mission is to uh, do some recon on the Star Destroyer, but in the end, you end up blowing it up. There's some really cool things going on in that. Uh, it is a lot of fun, and of course, there's great Star Wars music, so that just makes the ride even more epic. Uh, also at uh, Season of the Force, we have a new thing in Star Tours. They have the planet Jakku from The Force Awakens. Yep, and even uh, Finn makes an appearance. That's right. Um, so we get a little teaser of what Jakku might be like. It's a it's a fun um, adventure that, that when that's a destination. And uh, for the duration of Season of the Force, they will make Jakku your first destination each time. They've also made some tweaks to some of the other destinations. Uh, in our group that went, we found out that Naboo now has two different endings, the original ending and now a changed ending. So look for that. We've also noticed a change in the Coruscant ending. Um, then they also have the Star Wars launch bay. That's basically just like a big place full of Star Wars. Uh, yeah, the launch bay, it's in the bottom half of, of the Innovations or America Sings or Carousel of Progress building. Um, top half is still the Marvel Superhero HQ. The, and you can walk down the stairs to the bottom half or you can just go in the bottom half. Uh, the launch bay has a lot of exhibits of uh, props and costumes from all the movies. Uh, you can see kind of the, the evolution of you know, Imperial ships, Rebel ships, uh, some of the other stuff, some different costumes. They have some of the helmets from Stormtroopers and Rebel pilot helmets, hey. even Sabine's helmet. Hey, you got uh, a marshmallow R2-D2 stuck to you. And they have uh, some character meet and greets and photo ops. You can meet with Chewbacca. Yeah, we love Chewie. Baby girl, did you get to meet Chewbacca? She did, but uh, she was a little leery. Oh, you like Yowie? Yeah. Oh, get a hug. A hug. Oh. Yeah, hugs are great. Yeah. Um, we didn't get a chance to meet Darth Vader. I think that, uh, you know, we want to stay on the good side here. Um, what else do they have there? They have a chance to play some of the uh, Disney and 
Infinity Star Wars things. They have an exclusive little uh, playground there to test out for that. They have a cool shop where you can make um, like customized cell phone covers and stuff and some high-end uh, Star Wars loot. Um, and then they also made some changes to the Jedi training show. Uh, those were just put in recently. They weren't there when, when we went. Uh, they now have some Rebel stuff in there, including the Seventh Sister Inquisitor. Okay, uh, yeah, what's, what about Path of the Force? Oh yeah, Path of the Force. Uh, you know what? Why don't we uh, talk to some friends of ours and see what they had to say about Path of the Force. All right, we got special guests here, uh, Dart of Truth and Swank Motron, uh, Brian Young and D'Artagnan. Uh, how was Path of the Jedi? I had no idea what to expect and was really surprised to see sequences from all six movies. All seven movies. All seven movies. That's going to take a while to get yeah. used to. I think uh, oh spliced God. together in a way that made me a little emotional. Made me a lot of emotional. Um, the cuts that they had between young and old Obi-Wan paired up with Al Guinness's lines were just a little emotionally heartbreaking to see the I Was Once a Jedi Knight flashback to Uda Pau, Obi-Wan. Just, it hurt. Um, and then I think seeing uh, when they cut to Jakku and some of the new Force Awakens trailers, for me it was, holy crap, this is the big screen. This is uh, 12 days from now, we're seeing this for real. And that's when I start to tear up uh, a lot. Yeah. And uh, how, how do you feel like the, 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 the music flowed in with that? The music was really good. Uh, it put together the, uh, the themes of the different the, the different movies together like and matched them in ways I wouldn't have necessarily expected. Um, I'm just like, my only concern would be they need to have like a spoiler warning on here for anybody who's not seen the movies. Like, if I were at Disneyland with someone who'd never seen Star Wars and took them to this thinking it would be a good introduction, it pretty much spoils the entire classic trilogy. It pretty much spoils everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Baby Jawa saw it. it was her first movie. She now knows the entire uh, Star Wars saga. Any of them now. You can just start on Force Awakens and go from there. Yeah. No, other than that, it was... Yeah, and it was more than just a movie. What other effects did they have going so on? They did this in the Captain EO Theater, which has a floor that rumbles and light effects and, and wind. And well. wind, yeah. So it uh, combined all of that together. So it was a much more immersive experience than normal, like the, the hyperspace tunnel from the Force Awakens trailer shots. You're actually like, there's blue light swirling around you from 360 degrees. It's pretty yeah. amazing. And the lightsaber clashes, they add a lot of depth to them. They have speakers in front of your chair, so that it's just right there. And then sound, you know, lights flashing when there's lightning and blaster shots. Yeah. Um, blah, blah. Anything else you want to say? It was good. It's definitely worth stopping in and seeing yep. and getting and, a chance. And then they cut it together so it's not just linearly told through the saga. It just kind of starts with Luke's arc but then flashes back a lot to yeah. uh, what was going on uh, with um, Anakin and Obi-Wan. It's more a path of the Force and the Jedi than anything from what I was, from yeah. my opinion. But obviously it focuses a bit more when we get to the Return of the Jedi era and then moving into The Force Awakens. So yeah. sets yeah. you up for the, the Force Awakens. Yeah, I can't wait. All right. Soon enough. Thanks, guys. Yep, so that was uh, Brian Young and D'Artanian Richards uh, checking in with us on Path of the Force. Whoa, BB-8 taken away. And, of course, they have lots of cool uh, Star Wars packaging stuff for food. Uh, you can get the BB-8 Sipper, which is pretty awesome. Um, they also have uh, TIE Fighter popcorn dishes, some Wookiee Steins, things like that. All right, uh, let's talk about the Star Wars Epic Yarns. Okay, this series of books Wow, there's actually cool quotes on the back I didn't realize now. Um, these are by Jack and Holman Wang, and, and they are handcrafted felt scenes. There's 12 in each book and 12 words. And, and think about how would you sum up each Star Wars movie in just 12 words? So it, it's pretty cool. Our, our first word, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it here, is princess. Um, and then it goes on, you know, trouble, and then boy, and then uh, a couple other things. And these pictures in here are so great with the uh, the felt work that uh, Jack and Holman did. Holman was at Comic-Con this past summer. Uh, he 
kind of gave a little presentation on how they made each of the dioramas. Everything in the picture you see is real except for the lightsaber blades. Um, so when you see effects like in, in uh, The Empire Strikes Back when they go to Dagobah and you see you know fog effects, that's actually on the set that they were filming in. Uh, they, they showed us a little presentation of how they uh, put that together and how much work goes into making one of those felt uh, figures. So this, these books came out uh, earlier this summer. I just got them for Baby Jawa. Yep, and maybe, yeah, for Baby Jawa. Yeah, thanks, Siawi. Uh, yes, have you felt a disturbance in the Force? There is a great disturbance in the Force. I have felt it. Yeah? There is good in him. I've felt it. Yeah. Oh boy, I can't wait for them to do the new movie because the Force Awakens. We got, uh, we got something, something, something. Have you felt it? All right, thanks, Yowie. That was uh, a way to uh, draw that in there. Uh, we got these pop chips. Should we try them out? It is a thermal detonator of flavor. Uh, avoid the fried side. Are you hungrier than a Wookiee? They got other flavors, too. They got uh, sea salt potato, barbecue potato, and hint of olive oil veggie chips. I'm not sure what Star Wars character gets those. But uh, Captain, Captain Phasma is here on the crazy hot. Let's try it out. Baby girl, do you want one? Yeah? All right. Oh my goodness. So have you guys been watching all those different TV spots for The Force Awakens? Getting even more hints. All right. They, I guess, just had released some sort of a Chinese trailer or something that had even more footage. Hmm. They say they're crazy hot. It's got a little bit of a, a burn at the end. Pretty good. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to give these to you, though. Tasty pop chips. All right. Yeah, you got a little bit of food on you. No. Okay, let's talk about Star Wars Rebels. This week, uh, we have the episode Legacy. Ezra gets a vision in the Force from where he sees his parents. All right, I'm going to give this to you. You may not like it. It might be hot. He gets a, a vision from uh, his parents, Mira and Ephraim Bridger, kind of directing him to go back to Lothal. He sees it in an idealized state. He also sees a prison that they might be aboard or something. And finally, there's a white Lothcat that uh, is there to guide him. It turns out that Lothcats use the same character model as Tuka's. Last week we were talking about there being a Tuka. Oh my gosh, yeah, you're like, this is gross. Oh, baby girl. Are you okay? Yeah, I told you it would be hot. Yeah. <laughs> you okay? Oh, wait, wait, well, don't eat more. Yeah, okay. All right, we're making a mess here. Back to Rebels. So the, the, the uh, Empire is going to start cracking down on Garel because they got a tip last week. Oops, Ezra, bad call, mentioned Garel. Um, Rebels are hiding there, so uh, Agent Callus and the Inquisitors and Admiral Constantine all kind of try and work together to catch our uh, ghost crew and the rest of the Rebel fleet. Uh, pretty interesting that they all go to ground. And, and there's some great stuff there with the uh, tractor beam scene, uh, the ghost coming back to save the day for uh, Commander Sato. But let's talk about the, the main point, which is following Ezra's arc through this. He's got the white loath cat, kind of like the white rabbit in Alice in Wonderland, or maybe more in the Matrix. You know, we'll see how far it goes. It leads Ezra and uh, Kanan to see um, you know, a mysterious figure with the sniper rifle and start shooting at him. Turns out that you know, they've realized, hey, we're all on the same side. It is Ryder Azadi, who, a former governor of uh, Lothal, who was in prison with uh, Ezra's parents. The uh, Ryder is voiced by Clancy Brown, who did the voice of Savage Press. Yeah, you're going to now rub that stuff all over me? That's awesome. Okay, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of great scenes, a lot of great quotes. Um, you know, without hope, we have nothing. That's a, a good reminder that uh, you know that that uh, you know if you don't have hope, you're we have nothing. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Says it all. No, that uh, 
you know, what the power of hope is, and even in the most dire situation, you know, being in an unknown prison in the Empire, they managed to still hear Ezra's voice as he was uh, calling out for a call to freedom. Hi, baby girl. And then, if we don't stand up, who will? That is an important message, I think, for everyone to take to heart. There's a lot of, of stuff going on, you know, in the Empire at this time, and it takes brave people, people of courage, to stand up. It's also something that, you know, we can take listen to here that we got to stand up for what we believe is right because again you know if we don't stand up we're just letting the status quo stay the way it is so it's a great episode it's really going to be interesting to see how yeah do you want yaoi you want more chips i don't think you want more chips um it was a great episode to see how well oh baby girl you want to go back here here we get some cheerios for you see how much Ezra has progressed in the Force. He's getting Force visions now. Um, yeah, as we know, Luke got his a Force vision when uh, he was in Dagobah. He saw his friends in trouble in Bespin. You know, leads him to rush headlong into to tr danger there. We get Ezra getting this vision. Leads him into trouble, but he also comes out okay. And a greater understanding of his parents and knowing that even though his parents um, aren't with him, that they did hear him and that you know brings him some solace and he remembers them and then at the end he gets a, a little bit more of a vision but uh yeah and then we got that white white loath cat did you like that no you don't watch rebels because we don't let you stay up that late all right so you know legacy was also called uh something about prisoner x10 that uh turns out to be rioter there's a lot of imagery in there that just reminded me of the lion king and pride rock on lothal and the the, the sculpted rocks that the rest on that you know everything the light touches is yours hello 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 <laughs> uh we did have a couple uh, questions from our audience so we're going to answer those now okay the first one is for baby jawa it is from eliz uh eliz says baby jawa what is your preferred viewing order of the star wars movies you got anything to say well, it turns out that Baby Jawa has only seen The Path of the Jedi at uh, Disneyland. That's the only movie she's ever seen. She uh, seemed to enjoy it. It was only 10 minutes long, good for attention span, and we learned that she is not epileptic. Okay, uh, I guess that's her favorite order. Let's move on to question number two. Question number two is from Paula. Peas, where do you stand on those, for or against? Do you like peas? Yes. Baby Jawa does love her peas, that peas and green beans are some of her favorite veggies. Okay, all right, with that, that wraps up all the questions we had in the mailbox, so uh, send us more questions! So that's pretty much it for the week. We are going to see The Force Awakens on uh, Thursday night with a bunch of friends, um, have some cool prize drawings and such, and well, I'll see you on Friday again with some friends. Anything else you want to add, baby girl? You want more chips? I don't think those chips are good for you. I, th I think you thought I'm too hot. Okay, everybody, we're going to say goodbye. And with that, goodbye. All right, may the force be with you.